Hello, welcome back to our interview series from the International Association for Counseling. Here we are today with a very special person from Malaysia who's been doing uh, intensive work with the mapping project for Asia. And she was part of the internship team from Taylor's University who was supporting IAC for this project. So welcome, Navila. Hi. <laughs> welcome. Do you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, so people can know a little bit about you? Okay. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nabila Hilsha. So you can either call me Nabila or Hilsha. So I'm currently studying, um, I'm currently taking Bachelor of Psychology at Taylor's University. So that is situated in the heart of Selangor in Malaysia. So that's like the northern part of Malaysia. Um, yeah, so I'm, I recently was involved in IAC's project in the world mapping of the counseling profession. I was honored to lead the project along with my colleagues. So yeah, I really had a good time interning with IAC and I'm glad to be here with Desiree. No, thank you. I am so excited. Could you tell people who are watching this video a little bit about the mapping project that you were involved in? So, because me, some people might not know exactly what it is about. Okay, so the well mapping of the counseling profession is one of the projects, one of the big scale projects that is under IAC, International Association for Counseling. So it's actually, it aims to actually advocate the counseling profession around the world. So it aims to research and collect data and information about the profession, not only about the profession, but also about the mental health systems uh, around the world. So with my team, we were focusing more on the Asian and Oceanian region, Oceania, Australian region. So that accounts for like more than 60 countries. So with the project, we research a lot about the profession and the system and the country. So with this information, with the data that we collected, um, IEC will actually be using them and actually, you know, they'll be able to actually identify what are the resources that are available that in each of this country. Like, so for example, if this country is lacking in terms of I don't know, in terms of association, in terms of structure, in terms of their counseling profession, they're able to, you know, collaborate with them and, you know, provide advice on what to do after that. So with this kind of like knowledge and this kind of information, hopefully it's going to benefit a lot of like parties um, in the profession as well as in the mental health industry and how we would advocate the importance of mental health around the world. Yeah, so that's basically a bit about the project, yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's a huge and important project. What did you yeah. learn about uh, counseling in your region through the research that you did? Um, okay, so in the Asian region, it's, it's, as we all know, it's the biggest region in the world. So, um, so there are a lot of subsections, you know, such as um, how we did it is that every week, we would divide it into um, sub-regions. Like, so for example, this week we're working on Central Asia, next week is Western Asia, Southeast Asia. So each of the sub-regions have their own unique environment, counseling environment. But what I do realize, what they all have in common is that the structure of the counseling profession itself is not that strong. So it's very, it's very dispersed. Some countries, um, such as Singapore, they have well established in terms of their profession, whereas others are not really that much. But another thing, what they have in common is the stigma. So the stigma against mental illness, about seeking help from, from counseling, from basically seeking help about like their mental illness, especially awareness also about the mental illness itself, it's still not that high in this country. So yeah, I think that's what I found, like in terms of the similar and patterns among these countries. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you were working, uh, collaborating with IAC. What did you learn about the importance of having an international association for counseling? Was there any, um, I don't know, reflections or ideas about the importance that this association could have 
for the counseling profession? Mm, yes, I think it's actually prominent having an international association because the fact that there is a global outreach. Because, like for example, um, what in Central Asia I actually did on, sorry, on Western Asia I actually did on Tajikistan. So like for Taj in Tajikistan, the counseling profession is basically obsolete. It's there it, it, it's not recognized as a as a autonomous profession. So even in the history of psychology itself, it's kinda tumultuous because of like, you know, its history in itself. So the counseling, the mental health system itself in that country is not pretty that strong. But how do they actually try to establish is by outsourcing through the international NGOs that came in actually help them and provide relief. So I think looking at this is that when a country itself doesn't really have like a strong support, like a strong local, local support, international association organi organization can come in and actually advocate for the help and actually provide assistance to them. So I think having like this global platform, it can also advocate for, how to say, equal access to this kind of services. So yeah, global access and as well as equal access. So yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for your perspective. Now, how was for your team to work on this project? Uh, in your own words and in the way that you can maybe summarize the experience of the team working together. How many students, mm. like uh, how was the teamwork? It was online, okay. I, re I recall. So could you tell us a little bit about how it was for you? Yeah, it was a unique experience because it was totally done online. So our internship period was done over 14 weeks. So that's roughly around three months, um, more than three months, over three months. And then my colleagues, um, my teammates consist of seven other students. So they're also from Taylor's, they're basically my classmates. So the unique environment that we were in was that when our internship period started, it was when the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic was actually, you know, was starting to blow over. So in Malaysia, I still remember on March 18 was the day we were, um, we were stuck under the MCO. So MCO is what we call as the movement control orders. So where we all have to stay at our house, we cannot go out. So that was the time where we were actually finalizing our internship placements, our initial internship placements. So actually most of us didn't go through, like most of us um, actually didn't, weren't able to actually go to our initial company that we wanted to intern for. So we were, internshipless. <laughs> so in come um, Dr. Anasuya and actually offering us a placement in IAC. So like, look, um, so we have a placement in IAC. You guys are able to work in this global project. So let's go. And we actually did. So it was actually a very sort of last minute for most of us. I think around six of us were actually on board um, at the last minute. So at first, we didn't really get a, the huge picture of what the project is going to be so understandingly um, at the beginning we were kind of confused especially you know through visual it's very hard to you know it's it's different from having like a physical interaction where you can just get it on the spot but in the ritual you, you still need some time to actually process the information so at first we were confused but as the time goes by we are able to actually understand and keep the ball rolling in terms of what we want to do in IAC. And also another thing helps is that um, all of us are actually very close because all of us are classmates. So we already know each other's dynamics. And also structure in the presentation itself, I highlighted that, you know, being structured and being organized are so, so important, especially doing it virtually. Um, so there's some kind of, we have a timetable for everything. So like, for example, each week we would do this thing. So these are the things that we have to achieve this week. So if we want to do Central Asia, we will have to complete it within one week, including with the write-ups, including with the written um, reports of the country. So having this kind of structure and having progress meetings every week, 
about like our progress and as well as about our updates really really help so in short be structured <laughs> so yeah so we have to be structured but at the end um, of the week um, we actually got closer even though it's like not really face to face which is which is very interesting um, we got closer and we managed to form a connection with the project that we were in so that's nice that's wonderful. Great advice for everybody. I think not only for yeah. internship, I think structure does make a difference in achievement. Great. Now, is there anything that you would like to share to the rest of the world? Uh, whatever you feel that maybe it's missing from this interview or something that you think it's interesting for people to hear? Hmm. I think one of the lessons you know, throughout this whole pandemic, being, you know, being at home, having so much time and space actually made me reflect a lot about, you know, about a lot of things about life, about like my relationships with people. So I think one of the lessons, the big lessons that I've learned, not only from like going through this internship, but also from this whole situation is to embrace change because you know change is the only constant thing in life so that's something i learned actually first day of psychology in my learning and motivation class i still remember so change is the only constant thing in life so when we realize that even right now we are going through change by you know by sharing by sharing our information you know with this interview so the sooner we realize that we there's always going to be changes. There's always going to be things that doesn't go as planned. The more we're able to embrace it and be ready for it and be adapted to the change. So at first I was kind of very scared because, okay, so what's going to happen next? Am I going to get a job? Am I going to get an internship? So, but I think if you just let it and just go with the flow and accept the change, you are able to actually, you know, even get better opportunities, better experiences, just how, just how I did with IAC. So yeah, embrace change. Yeah, that's what Thank I would want to share with the world. Thank you for that, Nabila. I, I feel moved and I feel motivated also by, by your work, Sarah. And it's very generous of you to share not only your experience as an intern, but also your own thoughts and feelings and the process that you went through during this time. So I think this is wonderful and I'm sure that people will really get something from this interview. So I really appreciate your generosity and the time that you're taking with us. Thank you Thank really you so much. much. <laughs>